This last year has been one of the most challenging years of my life. I've been through painful and profound losses that I obviously couldn't possibly have predicted, wouldn't have chosen for myself, and that have really rewritten my life in ways that have been just incredibly challenging. While I'm not gonna go into the specific details of, of all the losses that I've been going through, some of them I'm, I'm still grieving with my wife. We're still going through and processing and, and, and figuring out how do we share our story, our experience publicly in ways that serve, but also that honor our privacy. So we will be sharing in the future, but just not quite yet. I will share that this year I lost my father, even though the man is still alive. <laughs> and it's not a mental illness thing or uh, dementia or anything like that. Our relationship has been estranged for many, many years. It finally reached a place where I realized that in order to be a part of his life, I had to subjugate myself. I had to be something that I am not and cannot be. And so while I haven't cut the man out of my life, I have chosen to step back from the relationship with him and and grieve the loss of a father that I haven't really had in 20 plus years. And there's been other experiences that have just been devastating to me in this past year. As I said, that have completely rewritten the, the story and path of my life. And I wanted to share with you three quick practices that I've been engaging in so as not to let these experiences ruin me or ruin my relationship with my wife. And the first one is a, a grieving practice of sorts, just allowing myself to feel what I feel. You know, so many of us men were, were so afraid that we'll get lost in feelings that we don't want to feel. I mean, we're afraid of feelings as it is because we've been taught our entire lives. It's not safe to feel, it's not manly to feel. And so, so many of us men are, are carrying a calcified, grief in our bodies. Uh, one of my mentors, Francis Weller, says that grief unmetabolized becomes bitter. So many of us men are bitter because we don't know how to metabolize our grief. And so amidst all of the loss I've been experiencing, uh, the, a grieving practice of just allowing myself to feel what I'm feeling, whether that's sadness or anger or fear or frustration or you know, deep even despair. One way of really allowing that to happen without being overwhelmed by it is setting a timer, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and just sitting in the feeling, allowing it to move through me, allowing it to have me. And then when the timer goes off, ding, done. Shake it off, go about my day. That's one practice, allowing myself to feel what I feel. Another practice has been mindset work. If I'm not vigilant about my thoughts, my anxious brain, my pessimistic, cynical brain will assure me that all these bad things happening are, well, first off, they're bad things, and second off, all they mean is calamity and ruin. Anxious brain, only programmed to survive, not to thrive. So being able to recognize when my thoughts are pessimistic or cynical or despairing and countering them not with just more self-shaming or self-criticism but countering them with mantras that are life affirming one of my favorites that i've used for for a long long time is life is constantly conspiring to bless me i just got to get out of the way and let it happen but for some people it's prayer for me it's mantras it's mindset mantras those really help me stay disciplined and vigilant to ensure that my brain doesn't take me down a, a spiral to crazy town. And the third is a practice that I learned recently. Uh, I'd been doing it really well with friends and family and even my wife uh, for, for, for many, many years. But, you know, in the context of relationship where my wife getting something she wants means me getting something I don't want, this practice has been uh, particularly both challenging, but also incredibly rewarding and helpful. And it's the practice of mudita. It's a Buddhist term, a Sanskrit term, a Sanskrit word, which means finding joy 
vicarious joy through the success and joy of others. One of the big transitions that we've been going through has had us move back to a place to live that I swore I would never live again. When I stayed in the focus, the awareness of what I didn't want, what I don't want, the, the nightmare that my mind was telling me it was sure to be, well, you know, misery, resentment, anger, upset was the only outcome. But as I've been practicing mudita and, and, and focusing on how good this move is for my wife, seeing her come alive, seeing her get excited again, you know, she wasn't doing well where we had been living for the past couple years. It's like planting a flower in soil that isn't good for that flower. You know, we've now replanted her in a soil that's really good for her. And as I've just disciplined my awareness to focus on that and let that bring me joy, holy moly, it's been pretty game changing. Mudita, all three of these practices together have helped my mindset, my body, my heart stay vital, stay alive, stay hopeful, uh, even in times of despair. I don't linger there long. And when I share with you some of the things that, that we've been through uh, in coming videos and, and, and blogs, uh, and, and in my weekly newsletter, I'm gonna write more about my father and some of these other experiences that, that we've been going through uh, of loss and grief and you know the transformations that we didn't want for ourselves. Um, which, by the way, uh, if you want to sign up for my newsletter, uh, go to Brian with a Y, BrianReeves.com slash subscribe and subscribe there. Um, but all of these practices have been <sighs> vital for helping me through these really difficult times. Again, allowing myself to feel what I feel, disciplined mindset work, life affirming mantras, and three, the practice of mudita, finding vicarious joy in the joy and success of others. Last thing, my new podcast episode of Men This Way is out. Uh, episode 117, we we'll dive into the art of turning conflict, relationship conflict into deep connection with your partner. Let me tell you, if I didn't have the skills that I teach, the insights that I share in this episode 117 of Men This Way, everything that I've been going through, that my wife and I have been going through, it would ruin us. It's an incredible episode. Go check it out, Profound, on your favorite podcast app. And thank you so much for listening. I'm Brian Reeves, Brian with a Y, Reeves.